Okay, welcome to lesson four of cartography. Uh, ex my ex excuses for the slide, it says lesson, oh no, this is lesson four, great. So this is lesson four, um, map scale and coordinate systems. Um, I'm Nathan Bowden. So on map scale, uh, we've, we've, we see them on uh, maps all the time. This one is in the lower left corner. Uh, the scale is in kilometers and in miles. So the scale is one, you see up here, scale is one, and then a colon, 51,400,000. So that means one centimeter on this map is 51,400,000 centimeters, or 51,400 meters, or 51.4 kilometers. And that is, uh, so that's what a scale is. There's also a visual scale here, which says, this is, this is blown up, uh, it's very much smaller, of course, on the map, but it says that this distance is 800 kilometers. Sorry, this distance is 800 kilometers, and this distance, no, no, this distance is 800 kilometers, and this distance is 800 miles. Um, uh, I wish miles, even though I'm, I am an American and I grew up with the English system, it's a very confusing system. Uh, I wish everything were just in kilometers, to make things a lot simpler. But um, uh, quite often maps are made for both systems, so that's why, uh, even though I've seen these thousands of times, it's still confusing. Uh, and in this system, if you were to take a ruler and measure it, this would be one centimeter. And one centimeter would be 514 miles. Uh, sorry, kilometers. Oh, I'm getting them all mixed up today. One, one centimeter is 514 kilometers, or one inch is 811.24 miles. Then we have something called uh, representative fraction. Uh, that's uh, the graphic scale here. This is the RF. But then we have something called the verbal scale. The ver verbal scale is therefore one uh, centimeter equals 514 kilometers, and the RF is is what you see right here. Scale one double point or a colon 51,400,000. So that's the representative scale versus verbal scale. Um, just to yeah make more things means things more confusing. We have on one side the metric system. Uh, that we will be using in this course and, and all of our projects. We will not be using the English systems, uh, but I, I have included this slide on this presentation purely uh, so that you um, are aware uh, that there is a secondary system that's used a lot in the United States, in England, in Australia, and some other parts of the world, and that's the English system. Uh, this I'm, I don't ever ask you this in any of the assignments or uh, projects, but this is purely a reference. So maybe if you, um, if in the future somebody has so it gives you something as miles or inches, you can uh, take back this uh, look back at this presentation and realize what it is. Twelve inches uh, are a foot. This is very uh, confusing. I don't even know this. 5,280 feet or a mile. Therefore, 63,360 inches are in a mile. And there are 640 acres in one square mile. Much easier uh, is this system. 100 centimeters in a meter. 1,000 meters in a kilometer. 100,000 centimeters in a kilometer. So 100 hectares is one square meter. The conversion is uh, there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch, one point, approximately 1.6 kilometers in a mile, and one hectare is 2.47105381 hectares. So uh, this may be your first exposure to the English system and and possibly your last exposure, but uh, at least uh, I've, I've given this to you. Measuring distances on a map. 
So uh, if you have a paper map, uh, the metric system, well, I'm just going to look at the metric system and you can ignore the English system on the right hand side. Um, 3.2 centimeters on, on this map. And then we have the scale is 1 to 24,000. So the RF is 1 to 24,000. Therefore, this distance is 76,800 centimeters. Centimeter to kilometer conversion is, is to divide by 100,000. Therefore, 3.2 centimeters is equal to 0 0.768 kilometers. And with that simple conversion, uh, you can do probably 25% uh, of the assignment. Um, it's, uh, it can, it's, you just have to practice a few times to get it right. And uh, I get it wrong all the time. Uh, that's one of the wonderful things about GIS is it tells you the actual distance. If you're using an electronic map, like, an, like in a GIS system, you can just click between two points and it tells you the distance automatically. You don't have to convert anything. But we do have to work uh, with maps sometimes. An area on the map is very similar. So if 32 inch centimeters by 6.8, sorry, 3.2 centimeters times 6.8 centimeters is 28.56 square centimeters. An RF uh, of 1.1 1 .1 colon 24,000, so 1 centimeter 24,000 centimeters equals a, a verbal scale of 1 centimeter is 0 0.24 kilometers because 24,000 divided by 100,000 is kilometers. You square both sides, so one square centimeter is therefore 0 0.0576 square kilometers. 0 0.0576 is 0 0.24 squared. And therefore, you can calculate that uh, 1 square centimeter equals 0 0.0576 square centimeters, and then 28.56, which was your first calculation, is 1.645 square kilometers. So it's a three-step calculation for area. It's slightly more difficult. First, you, you measure the area on the map in centimeters. Then you convert uh, the verbal scale, sorry, the, the reference, the RF, to the verbal scale. So one centimeter is 0 0.24. And that's easy. You just, div you just divide this by 100,000. Then you multiply this times this. And lastly, you multiply uh, this. Uh, by 28.56, which is the amount of the square. Yeah? Any questions about this? This is probably the most confusing um, part of the uh, presentation. No? I'm, I'm sure you'll uh, get a hang of it when you do the, uh, do the assignment. Uh, or not, and then I'll get a lot of emails uh, asking how, how to do it, uh, <laughs> which is also fine. Um, now we'll go, that was the last part of the calculations. Uh, the, of the very first part, the first six uh, sheets are about calculating, and the rest is about um, maps and coordinate systems. So uh, a qualitative chloropleth. These, uh, uh, you, you guys are working a lot with what's called a chloropleth map. Um, a chloropleth map is really just a, a polygon map, a map of polygons. So here you have uh, a chloropleth map. This is a qualitative uh, chloropleth map. That means it's a, th it's a thematic map, so it's not a reference map. It's a thematic map uh, which has shades or patterns. Here it's shades of gray. And it's qualitative, this one, because this shade of gray is a forest, black is a lake, here's an urban area, this is agriculture, and here's a wetlands. Yeah, so forest, lake, wetland, city, agriculture. It's actually uh, similar to, uh, to Breda. In the north we have uh, some forests, it's the city, there's a, well, a very, very small lake in a forest. But uh, that's a qualitative 
but quantitative would be a map of let's say uh, population if uh, if this were a population map this could be the most densely populated area this would be a slightly less slightly less even more or less and this is that would be the least and here on the right instead of having uh, qualities you would have numbers so this color would be from 0 to 25 people per square kilometer this would be 25 to 50 people per square kilometer etc so a chloropoth map is a thematic map using uh, polygons and these polygons can either be uh, qualitative so giving categories of, uh, of a class or it can give uh, a quantitative and this would be ranges now we'll move into something which um, I'm not sure you guys have uh, heard of before uh, namely uh, coordinate systems yeah so we live uh, on the earth and the earth is uh, an imperfect sphere and in order to get this sphere onto a flat two-dimensional surface I mentioned this I think a few classes ago we have to uh, develop things called coordinate systems the uh, idea of the coordinate system comes from a, a French mathematician Nicolas Auguste Tissot and he uh, said well you know any map that you uh, make then it was of course on paper every map that you make will be imperfect yeah so later they came up with uh, different types of projections to um, to compensate for this uh, every <laughs> to compensate for this uh, fault so here is the Mercator map which is a very very common map this is the map that you I saw every day in school Maybe if you see it hanging on a wall, it's normally a Mercator map. Uh, this is a map where the circles show you the, the, the exaggeration of area. Uh, so in the Mercator, it's just called a, also called a conformal map. It's the projection type is called conformal. Uh, the Mercator map uh, distorts area, but the angles are intact. So the angles are correct, uh, which uh, kind of gives you the correct shape. But however, shape is also distorted if you get further away from the equator. But area becomes exaggerated the further away you go from the equator. So the equator, uh, let's say, would have the correct area. If you go further north or south, this area becomes more distorted and bigger. And the further nor north and the further south you go on the map, the more distorted the area. So the same area on the map looks bigger. Uh, another, uh, another map projection is called the equal area map. And uh, Molvida was uh, uh, the first one to come up with this type of map. This map um, distorts area. Uh, no, this is the opposite. Eep. Mistake in my sheets. It's the exact opposite. Uh, area is not distorted, but the angles are distorted. I have to change that for sure <laughs> on, the, on my presentation. So ignore what I'm writing here. Uh, as you see, because the, the area of the dot is about right. But it should be a circle. And the further away you go from the center point of, a, of an equal area map, the more distorted the angles become and this perfect circle becomes an oval and, and the further you go to the southeast or southwest or northwest or northeast becomes an uh, oblique circle an oblique oval even worse than uh, in, in the uh, along the meridian line this is the meridian line so uh, basically you can't make a perfect map on two dimensions however there are projections that try to combine both properties uh, and this one is for the first one of these was the Robinson projection which you see here the Robinson projection the um, 
the area is slightly distorted the further north you go and also the angle is slightly distorted but it's a compromise so it's not as dis not the Robinson projection uh, area is not as distorted as the Mercator projection that distorts the area but the angle it's not as good as the Mercator and the opposite is the case it is um, the the area is not as good as the Molvida equal area however the uh, angles are a lot better they still are oblique ovals towards the edges but not nearly as dramatic so this is a, a projection that's just seen as a uh, compromise some other crazy maps that you may uh, come across well not crazy actually they're, they're, they're very good but only for specific purposes this is a uh, azimuthal equal distance map so in this one distances which we so we have area distortions uh, angular distortions and also distance distortions and azimuthal equal distant map is a map where the distances are correct but but here's the big but it's only correct from one position in this case which the map you see before of you uh, the distances from the north pole are correct so if you were to measure this distance from here to the the southern tip of africa let's say that would be correct and the distance between the north pole to the southern tip of um, south america to de fuego would be correct but if you measure the distance between Tierra del Fuego in South, in South America and uh, the southern port of Africa, that would be incorrect. Yeah, so these maps are great for making measurements if you are in one place. So if you anywhere in the world, you could make an azimuth equal distance for uh, Breda, for uh, Sao Paulo, for, um, for Budapest, but it would only work for uh, measuring distances from that from that location and of course well it that from that point so here the central point is the North Pole but you can imagine a map where uh, Sao Paulo is that about there <laughs> where Sao Paulo is the central point it's just this is now this is now you know rotated so now Sao Paulo is here so you would make a new equidistant map where Sao Paulo is here and the distances to the rest of the world are perfect so it's possible you can make an equidistant map for for anywhere in the world and this one they made it for the North Pole which is the you know, really the most common uh, this might be you know I've, I've seen uh, logos of this for like though the United Nations I believe has an equidistant map as one of their logos uh, another um, slightly, uh, this may, may look uh, crazy, but, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you how this map is made and how you could visualize it. It looks really crazy. When I tell you what it is, it might be more, make more sense. This is called a gnom mnemonic map, map. So not a gnome map, but a mnemonic map. It is a display of, um, of a great circle as a straight line. What does that mean? Um, and it shows also the shortest distance between two points. So what this map is made, it's very difficult to visualize, but imagine you are in the center of the Earth, looking outwards. And that's what the basic of this map is. But it, you're not looking at, at the, uh, you're not looking specifically uh, along the equator, you're actually slightly tilted I'll tilt my head this way so what looking from the center of the earth tilted across a plane between these two points so if you have the globe here's the globe and you slice the globe through a uh, a plane and this plane intersects these two points this is how this projection is made uh, yeah, it might have blown your mind it's difficult it's a very difficult map uh, to visualize uh, in in your gray cells but all it means for this map is that uh, uh, the straight line gives you the sh shortest distance if you were to put this on a mercator map the short distance would would you know would be incorrect and on this map this is the 
It's the choices between Chicago and London specifically. So you would end up flying just uh, south of Greenland. You'd be, you'd be going over Canada, almost directly northeast of Canada, and then southeast down to um, London. If this were a Mercator map, all of this area would be further to the south. Yeah, can you imagine that? And the line would be like this. It would be incorrect. So this map is uh, great for, let's say, pilots or calculating the correct fi flight path for a pilot. These uh, maps you will probably never ever see uh, in a book or online. These are used by computers. Um, some projections you might see, uh, see is, for example, the, a pseudo-cylindrical. I have two examples of pseudo-cylindrical maps. Um, this is an equal area composite map projection um, uh, which has multiple uh, interruptions. What does that mean, multiple interruptions? So this map ends here, and this point connects to this point. And this area in between uh, should, doesn't exist. So that's an interruption. Yeah. So this is a, an equal area, area map that's also been corrected for, uh, uh, corrected for angles. A second uh, map, a pseudo-cylindrical map, is uh, the sinusoidal, which is basically the map you just saw, but uh, without interruptions. So there are no interruptions. So the other one, there was an interruption here, and there was an interruption here. I think an interruption here, but now they've kind of been pasted on each other. But it looks kind of uh, wacky. I mean, it, um, uh, you don't see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these maps around. Okay, so now I have a, a short break. I would like you to uh, go to this link here, click there, and you will see a little puzzle. Um, you can interact. I know I can tell you the Mercator. It uh, the Mercator uh, uh, distorts area and uh, and also shape. But if you if you play with this puzzle a little bit, you'll get a better sense of what it's like. What you have to do on the puzzle, there are lots of pieces. It's a map of the world, and the pieces represent countries on the map. And you try to move the countries around to and place them in the correct place on the map. It's if you release the piece and it turns green, then you found the right location. And I will pause uh, this for YouTubers. We'll be right back uh, instantly. And for the rest, I'll give you 10 minutes to play with the puzzle. Okay. Now the puzzle time is over. Uh, now to uh, the last part: coordinate systems. Um, these are things. You, I'm sure you've seen. So as I mentioned before, the Earth is not uh, a perfect sphere. So if you see here, the this line here is what a perfect sphere would be. We often say that the Earth is a spheroid. The spheroid is because we're you know the, the Earth is spinning. Uh, the middle uh, of the Earth bulges out, and the top flattens a little bit. So that's what we mean when we say the Earth is a spheroid. However, that's also not 100% correct. Um, the Earth is what is actually called a geoid because not only um, is it flattened, which is a spheroid, we have uh, inconsistencies. So we have uh, mountains and we have valleys. So, you know, here might be the Alps and uh, here's the Netherlands. <laughs> not, not that dramatic, but the, uh, the Earth is not um, a not only is it not a perfect sphere, it's not a perfect spheroid. And if you want to be absolutely correct, if somebody says the Earth's a spheroid, saying actually the Earth's a geoid, there's a small difference. Uh, it's it's so fun being a smug uh, a smug person sometimes. Just don't do it too often. Um, so what do we talk about when we talk about coordinate systems? So here's the Earth. Uh, this is a very it's a much older system. This is uh, we have the longitude latitude system, longitude and latitude system. Um, of, of of degrees, yeah. So not surprisingly, the zero degrees. This was this system was uh, developed by the British. Uh, so they put zero the zero point through uh, through what's called uh, through Greenwich, England, uh, which is now called the meridian. The prime meridian was zero here, and the map on this map it's in the center, 
And of course, uh, zero uh, in uh, latitude is uh, the equator. And this is called uh, longitude. Um, I remember this because longitude is long, so it's always long. And latitude changes, so latitude around the equator is, is, uh, is much longer than the latitude near the north or south poles. So that's a good way to remember what's the difference between longitude and latitude. Longitude always long, latitude changes. Okay, so here's the system, and remember, uh, the top is going to be very distorted. So it's a teeny tiny, it's just a dot, and it distorts down to the south. This is a problem um, because we, they, uh, back when they invented this system, divided the uh, Earth up into uh, degrees, and then minutes, and then seconds. So 60, 60, 60. And this isn't uh, very super precise, uh, but at that time that's not that wasn't a problem because precision. It took you uh, three months to go from Europe to North America or South America, so uh, you don't have to be down to uh, millimeters uh, like we do today. So later there was a second one made, uh, uh, the UTM, the Universal Transmutator. Uh, Sorry, this is the state plane. The state plane. I have to. Ch oh, I, I can't believe I, I did this last night a little bit late, I think, and I uh, I made up some things. Um, yeah. So the UTM is what is the is the first one I saw. Uh, and divides it into sixty uh, different different. You see here sixty different uh, sixty different uh, uh, sections. Um, that's the universe transmutator. Then we have the state one, and we went from uh, basically from degrees, minutes, and seconds. So everything is divided divided into uh, sixty. But once you're done with seconds, you can't go any any further. So what they came up with, and I believe the 1950s, uh, was the state one, and the state one divided the map into uh, more what they call states so the distortion is less and also they rather than using degrees uh, minutes and seconds they just used a decimal system however there are two things you should be aware of there is still some distortion uh, along the poles uh, of the of the decimal system this means that if you are like me and you have a um, a, a, a navigator in your in your car, or if you're like almost everybody, you have Google Maps and you use Google Maps. The precise location is not correct. So uh, sometimes the, my computer, my my car will say, "Stop in 10 meters," and actually I have to stop in say 30 or 40 meters because it's using a it's it's a geocoding or actually a geo decoding a um, precise location into an imprecise projection yeah so that's why if you look at Google Maps or in your car uh, it tells you something is somewhere which actually it's a little bit further up it's because we're using an imperfect system um, converted into decimal places and uh, reconverted into a three-dimensional map and it could be slightly off this means the further north you are uh, the worse it gets. Yeah, the distortions are worse in the far north and the far south. So in Finland, let's say the distortions are worse than in in Spain. Uh, the last sheet is uh, like I mentioned before, uh, geocoding or geodecoding. Uh, nowadays, think think uh, the stars, or no, more perfectly, think Google or whoever invented these uh, these computer programs. We have geocoding software, uh, and you can instantly uh, find a location on the map, and it will give you the longitude and latitude in either degrees or in decimals, and uh, also the other way around. So if you put in a longitude and latitude, it will give you the location, an address. Uh, it's very handy, and this works almost everywhere in the world. Okay, that's the last of my presentation. I will let you get to the homeworks.
for the YouTubers, I will uh, stop the video. And for the rest of you, I will be here still.